of the Palmer Worldwide, organizers of this monstrous U.S. Pavilion you see all around you, and this beautiful Hall 3 here at uh, Le Berger. On behalf of the 300 U.S. firms, large and small, the 18 state pavilions, whose flags we proudly display behind me, the government, military, and NGO stakeholders on Team USA, Thank you for taking time from your busy schedules to join us this morning. For 28 years, Coleman Worldwide has organized the U.S. Pavilion at the Paris Air Show and conducted this event. We jokingly say we're going to keep doing it until we get it right. That was a joke. <laughs> and each time we have inaugurated the pavilion, we've done that by playing the French and the U.S. National Anthem. And as that con tradition continues today, some special friends of the Team USA back home wanted to show their support and lend their voices to ours as well. So if you would please stand and join me now as that uh, tradition continues. <laughs> of everyone's time, I will try, and you know how this is hard, how hard this is for me, to be brief, uh, to allow more time, especially to hear from our tremendous podium presenters. But today, in the words of the Rare Earth Song, I just want to celebrate. I want to celebrate with you, Team USA, the fact that we are here again after a four-year hiatus. Stronger and more capable than ever. For 60 years, Coleman Worldwide has been advancing global trade, and the common denominators have been trade events like this, Coleman Worldwide, and you all. The entire team suited up and stepped up 
to the challenges involved in engaging and succeeding in the global aerospace and defense arena. Okay, who step up and suit up to engage their counterparts abroad and establish policies and international trade agreements that pave the way for Team USA's success. I want to celebrate our military brothers and sisters in arms who have sworn to support and defend so that Team USA has the liberty to pursue our dreams. I want to celebrate my team at Coleman Worldwide, 31 of whom suited up and stepped up as we do 20 times a year at every major aerospace and defense exhibition in the world. And this week boarded trains and planes and automobiles to present this 6,500 square meter Blue Isle carpet fantastic displays in this, the largest international pavilion and the largest aerospace event in the world. And I especially want to celebrate that team's captain, Ms. Jerry Kozik, who after 25 years of dedication to Team USA, will retire and pass the baton on to the next generation of team leaders. Jerry. As I have stood here, she always stands there, supporting me and our organization, mindful of every detail in this pavilion, and responsible top to bottom of every bit of its success. As Jerry transitions to the next phase of her life, I'd like to acknowledge again the tremendous contribution she has made to the victories of Team USA, not only here but around the world. Again. And finally, I want to celebrate you, the exhibiting companies who suit up and step up 365 days a year in fancy exhibit halls like this and crummy hotel rooms wherever and whenever duty calls and the opportunities are present. You're the road warriors whose perseverance, fueled by the faith of your own products and services, push Team USA Aerospace's brand to every spot on the planet. I'm happy to all our distinguished visitors from the United States. I am pleased to say there are more than 400 U.S. companies here today. And I look forward to getting around the pavilion and meeting many, many of you. With the United States, France, and our other allies standing together in support of a sovereign Ukraine, this year's air show comes at a pivotal time for European and global security. We recognize our nation's economy and security depend on continued developments in our defense capabilities and are increasingly tied to a strong aerospace sector. The incredible work being done by the U.S. companies here today is what keeps the United States and the forefront of this fast-developing industry. Your focus on innovation is also helping to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers to invest their talents in STEM careers in America's future. And again, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the Paris Air Show and to offer our embassy's full support to showcase your important work. I wish each of you a very successful show. Thank you, Tom, and uh, thank you to your amazing team that uh, year after year after year around the world really does um, represent industry uh, so well, including all the small and medium-sized companies in the supply chain that represent more than half of the value of all U.S. aerospace defense exports. American capabilities are the best. I'm not biased, I think it's true. The world wants the products that we make. That's why they are trusted by partners and allies, and that is why the demand is so strong and continues to grow. Global partnership is key. In 2021, the US aerospace and defense industry exported to 205 countries. A testament to industry's role in America's economic success and reputation as a global leader in innovation. And France was the leading export destination for industry in 2021. But what sets U.S. industry apart from other countries around the world is our partnership with the U.S. government, including Congress and the administration. 
We are thrilled to have a high-level U.S. government delegation at the air show, including the largest congressional delegation ever at the Paris Air Show from both the House and Senate, many of whom are here today. Thank you for joining us. And from the Departments of Commerce, Transportation, State and Defense, as well as governors from across the nation. Their presence shows U.S. commitment to strengthening relationships Fostering environment, and fostering an environment that allows for increasing aerospace and defense exports. The Aerospace Industries Association was honored to host them for lunch this weekend, and then again this morning at our operations center and the Department of Defense Corral to tour our world-class equipment and meet with the U.S. air crews. Across the air show, you will see American innovation and ingenuity on full display. The USA Pavilion highlights some of the best that the American aerospace and defense industry has to offer. Nearly 300 companies in this pavilion, including nearly 30 AIA members, just in this pavilion alone. The USA Pavilion represents a significant portion of the largest U.S. industry presence ever at Le Bourget. At uh, this amazing air show, after four long years of not having it, on behalf of the Commerce Department, I particularly want to thank Tom, you, and your entire team at Common Worldwide, Terry, for everything that you've done, the impressive work that you've uh, put in to make this air show, uh, this U.S. Pavilion at the air show, what it is. You should be very, very proud of what you've been able to accomplish all these years. Um, I'm really excited to be here as part of a, as you all have heard and see, a very robust U.S. government delegation. Of course, our partners uh, from Capitol Hill, members of, of Congress, the senators, thank you for all that you do representing this country. I'm grateful to share the stage with uh, my colleagues, including Ambassador Bauer, my good friend Deputy Secretary Trottenberg, Assistant Secretary Taylor Kale, uh, and Eric, uh, thank you for everything that you do. Uh, such a great partner at AIA. The large presence of U.S. officials, industry leaders, U.S. equipment here in Paris demonstrates, above all else, our unwavering commitment to the security of Europe. As the, as the ambassador mentioned, we have a critical time in international history, uh, our land war in Europe for the first time in many, many decades. One of the most important roles that we have at the Commerce Department right now is holding Russia accountable through export controls for their unwarranted, unlawful, full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And we remain steadfast supporters of Ukraine and the Ukrainian people for as long as it takes. While I'm in Paris, I'm particularly excited to engage in conversations on some of the most pressing issues facing that we face today, combating continuous supply chain headwinds. We all know the challenges that we face over the last couple of years. Ensuring that the benefits of trade are felt broadly throughout our diverse business ecosystem and accelerating the frontier of American innovation in aerospace and in commercial space. And at the Department of Commerce, we work every day in partnership with our interagency colleagues to level the playing field for all U.S. companies competing in foreign markets. So it's really heartening to see such a large presence of new-to-market exhibitors here at the U.S. Pavilion. Startups and Acting FAA Administrator and also as U.S. DOT Deputy Secretary, I want to thank Tom Coleman and Eric and, of course, Ambassador Bauer and my colleagues, Deputy Secretary Graves and Assistant Secretary Taylor Kane, and, of course, acknowledge the Congressional Delegation <coughs> and thank them for their leadership and their partnership. It is great to be here at the USA Pavilion, where the best of American aerospace business and technology are on display as you're hearing. The U.S. aerospace industry now represents 5% of our GDP and 2.1 million jobs. I have to say, few industries in the U.S. can claim that. It's pretty remarkable. So if you wanted to honor your father, I'm actually going to take a minute to honor mine, because the last time I was in France, I got to visit Normandy, because my father was a World War II veteran. He was a bombardier navigator, and one of the proudest parts of his life was that he was one of the first planes to fly over Normandy on D-Day, so it was always special to be here in France. <laughs> My mother was also a World War II veteran. She drove a truck, um, so I'm also proud of World War II tradition. 
to give traditions. I know it's through tradition here to bring the best of aviation into the Paris Air Show. The best technology, the best innovations, and the best advancements in safety and sustainability. And all while we're creating a diverse and inclusive workforce. And I'll speak particularly from the FAA point of view on safety. As we look to the future, we must more now than ever partner on safety. When we've achieved zero failed crashes in the U.S., this is no longer good enough. We must achieve zero serious incidents and close calls. While we maintain our steadfast commitment to safety, we must also acknowledge that we're in the midst of a climate crisis, and we need to move quickly if we're going to achieve our shared 2050 net zero emissions goal. With President Biden's leadership, the U.S. has stepped up with billions of dollars to accelerate the usage of sustainable aviation fuel and invest in low and zero emission aircraft technologies. Making all of this a reality reminds us that aviation safety and the other challenges are too big and too complex for one country, one team, or one person to solve alone. Well. To achieve all of this, we'll need to bring so many partners in the industry together. We can work together to solve these challenges. And at both FAA and DOT, we want to create an aviation system with no close calls. We want to create an aviation system that's leading in innovation, gets to net zero carbon emissions, and welcome to the result. That will be the rest that we hope to bring to Paris. So, Tom, thank you, and congratulations again. Wonderful to know. Well, I, I'm wondering if there are any active duty reservists or former members of the Navy. Oh, there are a few in here. That's great. Um, let's see if we got some other service members that are a little more alive. Are there any airmen or women in this in this pavilion? <laughs> Anyone from the Army? Go Army! Now we're talking about it. We're alive here. Okay. Are there any few and proud Marines? Woo! All right. Here we go. We only need a few. 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 Um, I, um, I, I, I want to uh, express my appreciation for this pavilion, this gathering today. Um, Excellencies, Ambassador, um, my colleagues from the interagency, I want to thank you all for joining and coming in to here today, distinguished guests, our members of Congress. On behalf of Secretary Austin and Deputy Secretary Hicks, I, um, I want to thank you all for joining today. Again, this is my first time at the Paris Air, Air Show, and I'm very proud to lead the Department of Defense delegation for these very important engagements. As Tom mentioned, I'm the first ever Senate confirmed Assistant Secretary for Industrial Based Policy. And this, I would say, is a very target rich environment. Um, never before have we seen an air show of this capacity and this, uh, this breadth. It also doesn't escape me that we are in Paris, we're in Europe, on the heels of and, and in the midst of one of the first land wars in Europe. And I want to thank our industry partners, our international and global allies who are working with us to support the Ukrainians in their battle against um, Putin's war of aggression. I would like to emphasize how important it is to the Department of Defense to foster very close ties with our industry partners since industry provides our military with the equipment we need to accomplish our missions. I am especially excited to take a tour of this corral and to meet with soldiers, sailors, airmen who have been bringing the wide range of U.S. equipment to the show possible. The department is very grateful for their efforts and I'm America's oldest military ally. And such cooperation is extensive and multifaceted. It includes bilateral relations, economic, working together within NATO more recently, and especially cooperation with the European Union and with the Ukraine um, uh, contact group. The department is committed to U.S.-French alliance, and we embrace this cooperation to work towards a safer and more prosperous world. I want to again thank you all for joining us today. And I hope to get an opportunity to meet each and every one of you. And again, on behalf of the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, thank you all for coming and thank you for having me.
uh, sponsoring companies here, so could I ask those companies to send their representative forward to the stage? And yeah, the, the ribbon cutting itself will happen on the forward stage here. But can I get the representative from Aeronautical Systems Incorporated to step forward, please? And then the Boeing company, actually, onto the stage here. You guys are going to walk behind me. Right on. There you go. Yep. And the Boeing company, could we have your representative? How about we work together? Yeah. Yeah. When you need all, all of our ribbon cuttings. So what we're going to do, by the way, we're going to invite several of the DVs that are here in the, the area in front of the stage for an actual ribbon cutting photo. Then we are going to invite our members of Congress and our members of the U.S. Senate to step forward for a separate photo opportunity. So there's room for everybody. Uh, General Atomics, can we have your representative? Yeah, right. Okay. Very good. Hartzell Water Incorporated.